Using PM2 can help keep our node apps alive when things go wrong. To get started, we're first going to SSH into the server where we want to use PM2. Once we're in that server, we want to gain root access. And then we'll install the PM2 module using the NPM installer. We're now ready to configure PM2, so we'll issue the PM2 command. And we're going to supply two arguments to it. The first one is the startup argument, letting PM2 know that we want it to configure the startup scripts in the initd folder. The second argument is the CentOS or CentOS argument telling it what type of system we're running on. You can see that it's configured them here. It's generated the init script and placed it in the initd folder. And it's set it to run at startup so that whenever the system reboots or is restarted, that PM2 will start and our node apps will start along with it. By default, PM2 sets those scripts up to run as root. And there's nothing wrong with that, and it'll work just fine, but it's not considered best practice for Linux servers. The general rule is that you never want anything on your server running as root unless it absolutely has to be. So we're going to create a user account that's dedicated to running our PM2 process. We'll use the user add command to do that with a dash s to tell it we want to use the bash shell and a dash m that we want it to manage the home directory and we'd like that home directory placed in home node and then the name of our user account we'll create is called node. That's created so now we need to update our initd scripts to use that. Inside our script here you can see two variables. There's a user variable that determines the user that the account's going to run as and then there's an exported variable called PM2 home which is where PM2 is going to look for the node applications that it's responsible for managing. Change the username here to the user account that we created of node and then we will change the exported home directory to be the home directory of our node user. Now that the initd scripts are set, we're going to switch over to that node account that we created. We're going to create a small node app now. And you can see that this is a real simple app. It doesn't do anything other than return hello world to the browser, which is perfect for what we're trying to show here. And we can test this out using the node command, just like you may have done in the past by running the node command and passing in our, our script name. And if we come over to our browser window here, you can see that hello world is returned just like we expected it to. So let's kill that and let's launch it this time using the PM2 command. We're supplying two more arguments here. The first argument that we're supplying is the start command telling it we want PM2 to start. And the second argument that we're supplying is the name of the script that we want it to run. When we hit enter, we can see that the PM2 daemon is started. And then also, our server process is launched. And then we get a little console output here that gives us the name that it's assigned to our node process and by default it just follows the convention of the file name. It assigns it an ID number and then it gives us the PID or the process ID that it's running at on the server and gives us its status of online. So now if we come over to our browser and refresh it we get hello world retire returned just like we did before. The difference this time is that now PM2 is managing our app and if something happens to that app it's going to restart it. We can simulate that by issuing a kill-9 followed by the PID of the running process and we've killed that so then if we refresh our page again we see that hello world was returned and if we issue the PM2 list command we get our console output again only this time we'll see that the PID has changed 
indicating that PM2 detected that the running process for our node app died and it relaunched a new process to keep our node app up and running.